Jonathan Rochelle. Let's take a look at who's in my green room tonight. My first guest is one of the biggest and funniest stars in the world today. From the hilarious Parks and Rec to hosting the Golden Globes to voicing the part of Joy in the Oscar-nominated movie Inside Out, it is the fabulous Amy Poehler. Hello. She has a cup of English tea right there. Yeah, a cup of tea, yeah. My next guest is the man behind some of the most memorable comedy creations of recent times. He was Ali G. He was Boat. He was Bruno. Tonight, he's here as himself. It's Mr. Sasha Baron Cohen. <laughs> well, how handsome Sasha is when he's being himself. <laughs> I'm delighted to welcome my next guest because I like to think of him as being like my favourite uncle. He's funny, he's cuddly, he's kind, he's often drunk. <laughs> A few things have happened in the past the family still don't like to talk about, but we <laughs> still love him and welcome him with open arms. It's Stephen Fry! <laughs> Good evening, Stephen. <laughs> Already with the head shaking. Already. <laughs> and before my next guest became a stand-up comedian and TV presenter, he was a teacher for many years, specialising, of course, in the three R's, something I failed at. Maybe he can help me this evening. <laughs> It's Romesh Ranganathan. Great to have you back on the show. And as if that weren't enough, we also have fabulous music from the brilliant number one recording artist, Sean Mendes. We'll be doing these hit single stitches later on this evening. Now, my favourite story of the week comes from Florida, that's in the United States of America, where a man was arrested, I don't know if you saw this, a man was arrested for throwing an alligator through the drive through window at a Wendy's fast food restaurant. <laughs> I think at the moment it's not been proved, it's still just an allegation. <laughs> <laughs> well, he claims he has an alibi, so... Uh, <laughs> apparently he was just looking for a quick bite. Anyway... <laughs> what's absolutely true is that the man has been charged, this is the truth, he's been charged with assault with a deadly weapon. So that's right, so they're counting an alligator as a deadly weapon. Now, it surprised me because I believe it's stated in the American Constitution that their citizens have the right to bear arms. So, if an alligator is a dangerous weapon, surely they can carry an alligator. I'm going to ask our only American in the building this evening that I'm aware of. Uh, Amy, do you carry an alligator? Well, uh, I, I, I carry it concealed, yes. Right, okay. but, um, but in the US, we believe there are no bad alligators, just bad people who carry alligators. That's, that's, <laughs> what, uh, that's it. That makes perfect sense yeah. to me. Uh, an exciting new app has been launched, ladies and gentlemen. I want to share this with you. It's called this new one. It's called Face Swap Live. You've seen the old one where you could take your face and put it on a friend's face, but it was a still image. Well, they've done a new one now where if you're together, you can swap your face live and look at yourself talking in each other's bodies. So I thought we would try it out with our guests. So I think it's there. Yeah, let's go with Ramesh and Amy first, see if you can get this okay, working. Ramesh. And we'll see what Here you look go. like with Here each other's look. face. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Amy, you look really sexy with Thank a beard. Thank you. I look like my own brother. I yeah. look like my brother. <laughs> wow. This is this is this is gives me an existential crisis. I'm yeah. turning myself on. <laughs> 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 Should we see Stephen and Sasha? Do you want to see that? I can't imagine that. Okay. 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 Yeah, we are. Yeah. Mm. Hey. 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 It's hey. David Who's David Cameron? He's on the road. He's on the road, but it's it's like David Icke and David Cameron going on a date. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. That was uh, terrifying. Should we get on with the show, ladies and gentlemen? Let's get my first guest out. She's one of America's biggest stars. I'm thrilled to have her with us tonight. I couldn't be a bigger fan. It's Amy Poehler, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hey, so before we start talking about you and start talking about your career, let's just uh, talk about something which is touching all of us right now, of course. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Yes, yes. Do you make a fuss of Valentine's Day? Well, I don't. I mean, there, there was actually a, a, 
a fake holiday that we came up with on Parks and Rec called Galentine's Day, which was the day before Valentine's Day where you celebrate with your female friends. So your gal pals. Yeah, so that I actually enjoy celebrating maybe more than Valentine's Day, which is f a fake holiday, yes? Yeah, but do you do it, though? Do you actually do it in real life? Do you have a, ga a Galentine's Day? I did. Th this time last year, all the, uh, the ladies from Saturday Night Live were in town in New York because we were celebrating the 40th anniversary of SNL, so we actually had a dinner. So I'll have to find some female friends here. <laughs> Some gals. Well, I think you won't have any trouble. Some gals. Uh, have you ever had a bad Valentine's gift or a super good Valentine's gift? Uh, or... I remember in high school we had something where you could give a, a carnation to someone in your class and it was there was some I'm having some post-traumatic stress thinking about that because <laughs> you would just sit in your classroom just waiting to see if a carnation came to you. And I think I may have sent myself a carnation. Wow. <laughs> Just so I wouldn't be embarrassed on the day. Wow. I know, it's, it's a real low point. Yeah. I, I pretended I was my own boyfriend. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope you guys feel bad for me about that. Yeah. Oh, thanks. So, we're talking about awards right yeah, now. Yeah. And you and Tina Fey, when you hosted the Golden Globes, I do not think I have ever seen the job of hosting the award show done better. Thank you very okay? much. And it was with very respect fun. to Stephen Fry, he's doing BAFTA this weekend, but I think you guys, are you set a standard there. Uh, was, was it that when you were first asked to do it? Did you have second thoughts at all, or did you know this was something you would have fun with? We are, we're lucky that show people get to drink. And that makes a big difference. And it's, uh, what I find <laughs> fascinating about the Golden Globes is the fact it's uh, the, the only award show, that's all where you do have the TV people, they're with the film people. Yes, you have the beautiful film people rubbing shoulders with this disgusting rat-faced people of TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a strange night with strange nominees yeah. and weird <laughs> speeches, so it's good for comedy. Uh, there's a moment I have here, this is uh, a picture of Amy co-hosting the Golden Globes. There you go. Oh, yes. George. So you're keeping George's lap warm. Yeah. I was walking by, I was busy working, and I was walking by and George said, come, come sit on my lap. And I said, not now, George. <laughs> and he started to cry or something, so I <laughs> felt bad for him. Uh, you know what, we've got this final interview and I haven't mentioned uh, one of my favourite things that you've been involved in, and one of my favourite things of all time, Parks and Rec. I don't know how many fans we have in a Parks and Rec. <laughs> It, it, I don't know what channel. What channel was it over here? I don't know. It's so interesting that American comedies and British comedies have this weird thing where I don't know why we can't watch each other's stuff. It's very well, strange. I mean, I was down. just saying backstage that I used to. We used to trade um, VCR tapes of like the day today, you know, like and yeah. Alan Partridge because we couldn't get it. For people who haven't seen it, and you could buy it on DVD, and I would urge you to do that. But what? Yeah. what how would you describe the show and the character? Very quickly, Leslie? it's uh, about a. Politician with big dreams and very little power. Uh, local uh, Parks and Recreation employee, Leslie Nope, who believes that she can make a difference. And it's the bunch of wackadoos that work with her. Yeah. But it's just sweet and funny. And what a cast, of course. She had Aziz Ansari yeah. on it. He was on the show a few the, weeks back. The, the world-famous Chris Pratt. Well, that's the thing. Chris Pratt, who we now all know as one of the... Aziz Ansari, hilarious. He's a, the hot action star guy yes. now. And there he was back when he had a dad bod. Yeah. He was like a regular shaped guy. Yeah, I remember him preparing for this movie called Guardians of the Galaxy, and I was like, oh, that's never going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know. But he's super funny in it oh, as well. He's, he's, he's a supreme guy, incredibly funny and incredibly talented and also just like a leading man. Yeah. But he's also tall, yeah. which is rare for an actor. Is there, are they normally pretty tiny? They're usually then? tiny. Wow. wow. Teeny tiny. And you're, you're not a tall, tall woman, but you're not a short, short woman. Thank you. I am a short, short woman. Well, are you? 5'2", which I think is below average. Oh, that is. Small. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's not that small. I once went out with a girl who was 4 foot 11 and a half. Really? <laughs> and, she, and she will not let it go. <laughs> it was 30 years ago. <laughs> Well, she was a shorter person. Yeah. But it was fine. Uh, yeah. But you must miss, when you've worked for that long yeah. with the team of people, and clearly you could just sense from the show that you guys were getting along, uh, I yeah. guess you must miss them. Do you have... Uh, I do. I miss them all very much. I would love to find some excuse to have a reunion with them again. I love them. Um, let me ask you about uh, Inside Out. Because okay. Inside Out was... I mean, I love animated movies generally. I love Pixar, of course, and Disney films. But what a lovely, what a charming, what a thought-provoking film as yeah, well. Yeah, it was so good. And I guess quite a tough part to play, because you're playing the character, well, the emotion of joy. Yes. But I guess you have to modulate that kind of performance somewhat. Well, you know, you, one could get really sick of that character. 
but joy is the kind of the engine that that moves the story along and the the wonderful uh, moral of the film and the story is that it's okay to be sad, basically, to teach children that you don't always have to be happy all the time. There's a lot of emotions going on, and, and sadness can kind of inform you and um, support you in ways that yeah. you never imagined. But so Joy has to uh, give up the reins, and she's in control. And I had to make sure that she wasn't the kind of character you just wanted to slap on. So I guess time. if she was too crazy over the top happy all the time, that's too much. And if she isn't enough, then... Yeah, she would be a, a psychopath, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think many people's favourite character in it, and this is... Please don't take this as in any way dismissive of your contribution, but Anger, the yes. character of Anger. I don't know. Did your kids like the movie? Did they like one character? Did they love they seeing... They love Anger. Anger is their favourite because he, when he yells, uh, fire comes out of the top of his head, yeah. which is just a great gag. <laughs> And um, also, he's, he misbehaves. Yeah. You know, and he just says all that. They're two young boys, so they just love anyone that says no. Yeah. And, <laughs> and does the opposite of what they're supposed yeah. to do. And Lewis Black did the voice of that, and he was amazing. Well, let's have a look. This is a little burst of Inside Out. All right, open. Hmm, this looks new. Make it safe. What is it? Uh... Okay, caution. There is a dangerous smell, people. Hold on, what is that? This is disgust. She basically keeps Riley from being poisoned, physically and socially. That is not brightly colored or shaped like a dinosaur. Hold on, guys. It's broccoli! <laughs> yeah! Well, I just saved our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. Riley, if you don't eat your dinner, you're not going to get any dessert. Wait, did he just say we couldn't have dessert? That's anger. He cares very deeply about things being fair. So that's how you want to play it, old man? No dessert? Oh, sure. We'll eat our dinner right after you eat this. Ah! Right, right. Here comes an airplane. Ah! Oh, airplane. We got an airplane, everybody. <gasps> <laughs> it makes sense. Let me ask you about Saturday Night Live, because that, of course, was already a legendary yeah. show. It was the benchmark for comedy in that country, probably globally as well. Uh, what about the guest stars on the show? Because working on that show, you have the most phenomenal list of yeah. guest uh, hosts coming through. You had John Hamm on, and I think well, you were heavily pregnant when he was I on the show. Was. Right? Um, I was. Uh, I, I wrote about this in my book. There was a, a funny instance where... Um, I was due to give birth on that Saturday, and it was the Friday before, and I made the mistake of thinking that my child was going to play along with the, these plans. <laughs> but I was supposed to do SNL, and John was the host, and uh, we were rehearsing something, and I got a phone call and burst into tears. And a heavily pregnant woman crying is, is scary. <laughs> and I informed him that my uh, beloved OBGYN had just passed away. <laughs> Um, of heart attack. I'm sorry, I'm laughing. <laughs> and I was just standing there, and I said, my, do my doctor just died, and I'm due to deliver tomorrow. And everyone got very quiet, and he just leaned in and said, this is a really important show for me, and I need you to get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> and it was awesome. And awesome. And then I ended up giving birth the next day. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And missing the show. And, uh, and, uh, and he's and, never and, forgiven you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he went on to fame and fortune. Yeah. Uh, I'm so glad you came on the show because, oh, uh, and I, I, please, I hope this doesn't sound in any way patronising or condescending, but I love your work because there is a humanity and an intelligence that shines through your work which I think transcends even the most basic premise if you were involved in something broad. I always think you're a joy to watch. I Thank really you do. very so, much. I'm so pleased to be here. Thanks thank for you having me. Amy Poehler, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Still to come on the show, we'll be joined by Sasha Baron Cohen, Stephen Fry, and Womish Hangan Aiken, so don't go away. <laughs>
Well, when are you done or what to do, being yourself? I have no idea. <laughs> well, no, this is genuinely. It's a terrible decision. Well, is it a, it, does it feel strange not being, uh, being a character in front of an audience for you? Yes, it feels bad. It feels bad. <laughs> I'm regretting it. But I would have thought being those guys, because they're such weird comic creations. I Maybe for you. <laughs> I would have thought that would be more difficult. I mean, coming out as Borat certainly takes a certain amount of crazy confidence. Well, uh, the problem with Borat originally was... <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, ladies? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, um, that was an interesting decision. That was... If you see, the nipples are covered. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's, it's, it's kid-friendly. <laughs> um, but that, that is old-school sex. Yeah. <laughs> So, being yourself, then, what kind of a... <laughs> when you are out as yourself, because uh, I think of you, you're a smart person without doubt, but uh, do you fit in with Hollywood crowds well? Are you, are you at ease with other famous people? Or, no, or no, no. I'm very scared to be next to Amy, firstly. Good. Good. <laughs> but I've spent a few years in Hollywood and it's been a disaster, actually. Because <laughs> um, socialising has been very difficult for me. I, I once went to a party the first week I was there and Jim Carrey was there. Wow. He was complaining about being single and suddenly there was quite an attractive woman went past and I go, she was looking at him and I said, what about her? She's, she looks like she's up for it. <laughs> and he goes, uh, that's my daughter. <laughs> so... <laughs> so basically I don't go out in Hollywood. Oh, wow. but, uh, <laughs> there are about 20 <laughs> more of these. There are about... <laughs> But um, uh, let's talk about your two... Your, Ali G was your first kind of really successful creation. Yes. Uh, now, when he was first created, he wasn't even called Ali G, was he? I believe it was just a generic term you had for him. Yeah, well, there was... We actually shot it, I think, in the next studio to this, the 11 o'clock show, back in the, back in the 90s, yeah. back in the old school. <laughs> <laughs> originally, they came up... They said, we want to do this character called the Youth Wanker. <laughs> I actually never thought Ali G was a wanker, but, um... <laughs> Although he did play with his beast. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'd been... I came back, I said, what about this character, you know, and came up with the name Ali G. Yeah. So if you were talking to some very important upper-class person, they'd think that he could actually be that thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, so we were playing to their prejudices. <laughs> But well, I guess some psychological levels. It wasn't just big knob jokes. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess at the same time as well, you were relying on and playing off of what is, especially in this country, a certain innate politeness. Yeah, well, it would happen in America as well, you know. So what I'd do is I'd go into the, go into the room and someone like Pat Buchanan, he was a Republican presidential candidate. Yes. You would know him, Amy. Yes. No, this yeah. is for you. <laughs> So, so, in America, you know, they were even more polite. So, someone like Pat Buchanan, the idea was I'd try and convince him that I was an idiot before the cameras were rolled here. <laughs> so, I go, yo, you know, it's wicked to be here. <laughs> and I go, you know, so, where is we? And he goes, we're in Washington, D.C. <laughs> we're in Washington, D.C. And I go, yo, is that near America? <laughs> and so, yeah, he go, yeah, that... That is America. <laughs> I go, wicked. Oh, wicked. It's great to be in America. Cause, you know, in a few weeks, I was hoping to go to the USA. <laughs> uh, he'd, say, he'd say, no, the USA and America are the same thing. And I go, all right, let's agree to disagree. You know, <laughs> you, know you say tomato, I say potato. You know. <laughs> let's bring this up. Let's bring this up. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but, yes, yeah, so, that, you know, when I'd come in as Borat, the first thing I'd do is... I'd go, hello, uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> and I'd go, can I please uh, make a shit? <laughs> <laughs> the assumption was, if someone's coming into your house and they're asking to take a shit, <laughs> you feel sorry for them. Yeah. <laughs> as Borat, I know you got quite a lot of flack, um from Kazakhstan itself. Yeah, they got very upset because I hosted the MTV Awards as Borat. Yeah. And <laughs> I pretended that their Prime Minister, Premier Najibayev, came on. I go, no, Premier Najibayev. And I got on my knees and I kissed his crotch. Yeah. <laughs> and they got very, very angry and they decided that we are going to show this is not our Prime Minister. Our Prime Minister did not go on to MTV Awards and get uh, 
uh, oral relief from Ebola. <laughs> so they ended up spending about $30 million in a campaign to prove that they were the real Kazakhstan. <laughs> and that Bolat was yeah. not. Yeah, but meanwhile, what I decided to do was they got so angry that their Prime Minister, <laughs> Premier Najibayev, actually flew to Washington to complain to the American president. <laughs> so I heard he was coming, so I thought, bugger this, I'm going to Washington. <laughs> so I found out the half an hour window where he was going to be outside the Kazakh embassy and in the White House, and at that point I decided to throw a press conference <laughs> outside the Kazakh embassy, pretending to be the real Kazakhstan. <laughs> You know, I go, I want to say uh, this is such a crime. Uh, this uh, Jew comedian is not a real Kazakh. He is controlling the media. <laughs> Uh, but what strikes me is that what you're doing actually, although very, very funny, is also quite dangerous, sort of. You must at times feel like maybe it could go too far. Maybe you would be in actual danger. Yes, well, there, there were some times, you know, where things got a little hairy. Um, no pun intended. No, no. <laughs> I'm above that. Um, that was a pun in English. Oh, I see, oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, we wouldn't laugh there either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so, you know, it would occasionally get a bit hairy. There was a, a time we did this cage match at the end of this movie for Bruno. Bruno was this gay Austrian character yeah. that I played. <laughs> Anyway, the idea was we built this ultimate fighting arena and we had like 2,000, um, how would you describe them? Sort of quite violent uh, people in Arkansas. Oh, yeah, red, well, rednecks? Rednecks, yeah. rednecks, thank yeah. you. I wanted you, you to want say they're very yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than me. <laughs> I should get out of jail card yeah. right there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then basically the idea was, I, I had a lawyer, um, <laughs> and he was actually based in India. We had all these sort of Indian lawyers who... Why, why is your lawyer based in India? Well, cheaper. Cheaper. Oh, okay. much. <laughs> You know, we had literally one guy, he was like the expert in Arkansas law, and he'd go, well, in the case of Mackenzie against the state of Arkansas. By the way, that was actually the way he spoke. Yeah. And that, <laughs> that became the basis for a character I did in Madagascar, <laughs> King Julia. I like to move it, move it, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, uh, oh. wow, this person's very quick. Yeah. Yeah. So, but basically, he said, all right, he goes, whatever you do, I'm going to make his accent English now. He goes, whatever you do, he's going to be American now. Whatever you do... OK, not a very good American. OK, he's going to be English. He goes, whatever you do, do not cross a state line and incite a riot, because that's a federal offence, imprisonable for five years. I go, well, the problem is, I am crossing a state line in order to incite a riot. <laughs> and the idea was that me and my boyfriend in the movie, as opposed to my boyfriend at home, yeah. um, <laughs> um, would basically have a fight and then start kissing and have close to sex in the arena. So you're in front of Ultimate Fight fans. Yes. And I start kissing my boyfriend, we're making it, and the lawyer said, you know, kiss on the mouth, but not... You know, you cannot kiss on the nipples. I'm, like, playing with the nipple. And it gave me these 15 laws. You know, the, the finger must not be close to the rectum. <laughs> but can you open... And I've got open palm. Is open palm all right on the anus? <laughs> open palm is fine, you know. <laughs> and so we saw him making it out. Da, 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 and, you know, all the time, his hand's getting a little bit close to my rectum, and I'm taking yeah. it off. And then, basically, these guys started throwing these metal chairs in, and I'm lying with him on the floor, and I'm thinking, I see the first chair land, and I'm thinking, if I lie on my back, I can move him from side to side <laughs> and touch the chairs. I go, this is easy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, got out of there. All right, let's talk about your new character, Nobby. He stars in from Grimsby, opens on the 24th of February. I've seen it, it's very funny. Tell us about him and uh, who he is and, and where he comes from. Well, the idea was you know, to have a kind of James Bond character, and we thought, who would be his ideal brother? And I spent a bit of time up in Grimsby and up in the north of England. Originally, he was a kind of, meant to be a kind of football hooligan. In the end, it turned out not to be. But I went to a pub in Grimsby, one of the local pubs there, and a bloke comes up and he goes, wait a minute, you... He goes, you're fucking Sasha Baron Cohen. 
No, I, sorry, the accent is totally wrong. So, he goes, you're fucking Sasha Baron Cohen. I go, I go, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm really not. He goes, it is. It's fucking Ali G. It's Ali G. <laughs> I go, I'm not. I'm not. I'm really not. He goes, it is. You're fucking Sasha Baron Cohen. I go, listen, OK. Be quiet. I am Sasha Baron Cohen. <laughs> just, just please keep quiet. He goes, you're not fucking Sasha Baron Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> goes, Why is Sasha Baron Cohen? In our pub. <laughs> I go, you're right, I'm not Sasha Baron Cohen. <laughs> I go, I'm not, I'm not. You're actually right, I'm not Sasha Baron Cohen. He goes, yes, you fucking <laughs> are. It's <laughs> fucking L.A.G. <laughs> I go, went on for about an hour. This guy, this guy, I asked him, I said, what do you do? He goes, I'm a Neil Diamond impersonator. <laughs> Name any song. I said, Sweet Caroline. He goes, how does it start? <laughs> The worst Neil Diamond impersonator in the world. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's have a look. I'm going to show you the trailer, and then we're going to talk about... Maybe we'll show a scene from the movie. Yes, and I'd, I'd love to. I'd be very interested to see how the audience reacts. Oh, <laughs> great, yes. First of all, this is uh, just the trailer to get you excited for Grimsby. Opens 24th of February. Look at this. How could you not tell your own brother what you do? I'm a spy! You know you should keep that quiet. Bobby, I need your help. Oh, these heated seats make you feel like you've pissed yourself. They're all heated seats. Yeah, well, I told you not to smoke. At your age, you should just be vaping. Do you have any other skills? I can make my balls look like Sir Ian McKellen. Has anyone ever told you? You're a very beautiful woman. Only a guest called Mr. Bill Cosby. <laughs> That pellet was filled with a toxin. I'll be dead in 90 seconds if you don't suck it out. Ah! You can suck my scrotum or you can let me die. OK. What would you like written on your gravestones? Suck my balls! In what font would you like that? <laughs> I'm pretty big. Uh, open February 24th. Very funny. So, OK, so, look, we have a scene. So I'd like to show that to the audience. Excellent. And we thought we'd get your reaction to this and see whether you enjoy this. <laughs> All right, so, but so can you show this to people at home? Well, we can show a tiny bit. I don't think we can show much of it to people at home. OK. We can, so you should explain <laughs> what's happening. Oh, right, OK. So I first should say anyone who wants to leave should probably leave now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sued enough. Um, but I have a very good lawyer in India. <laughs> I mean, seen many people will find this scene disgusting. No, 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 no. Yes, well, yes, yes, yes. Maybe, yes. maybe. So what happens is, so I end up with my brother. He's this kind of James Bond character. We reconnect. We love each other. Anyway, we end up on the run on this kind of Mission Impossible, Born Identity type mission. And something very bad has happened. And something even worse is about to happen. So this is Grimsby, opens February 24th. <laughs> you have been warned. I know where to hide. I got an idea. Oh, great. Because your ideas have netted nothing but gold up to this point. You're gonna follow me and you're gonna do exactly what your big brother says. Hurry! Come on. <laughs> they were just here, spread out. Fine, man. I think you could have gone further. <laughs> Listen, I, I want you not to worry. You know, there is some extreme stuff in the yeah, movie yeah. as well. Uh, elsewhere, look, let me just ask uh, Womesh and Stephen whether they enjoyed that sequence as well. That was, was great. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's> extraordinary. You, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to start rumors, but you both look a bit post-coital. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was going to have an asthma attack. <laughs> OK, well, that's the oh. film, ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Mr. Sasha Baron Cohen. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
show to come will be joined by Stephen Fry and Lerma Frank and Nathan. See you after the break. Out. He straddles a national culture like a behemoth polymath. It is, of course, the one and only Mr. Stephen Fry, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. So, exciting news, it's the BAFTAs tomorrow night on BBC One at 9pm. Mm. You are our wonderful host uh, for the 11th time you've yes. done this, I believe. N not consecutively, but 11 times you've, no, you've I, stood behind that podium. Well, I started in 2001, Wow. Uh, then I had a little pause, which, and you filled my yeah, gap. Yeah, and then you said yes again, so they got me out the door. <laughs> the do, you, uh, do you get nervous at all? Because it's still a, it's a big gig. I, I do get nervous. Uh, I, if I don't get nervous, I get nervous because I'm not nervous. And as Amy said earlier, when we were chatting, which anyone who presents an award show recognises, that let's say there are, I don't know, a thousand people out there. Of that, 750 at least will be nominated for some kind of award. Um, and as the evening progresses, uh, four-fifths of them will have failed to get the award. So the room is turning more and more hostile, embittered, <laughs> resentful, <laughs> angry, and they just want to get out of there and get drunk. Yeah. And even the people who have won want to get out of there because they want to bring their mummies. And, and they're and not going to win anything more. They're not going to win anything more. <laughs> so really, the, the thing is to hold it together <laughs> towards yeah. the end by the, before it can actually erupt in violence. It's not... One might hope that it might be a bacchanalian knees-up afterwards, but it doesn't tend to be, does it? I mean, do you think that... It's uh... a funny thing. You love films as I do, and I'm sure you both do as well. And, and if you go back to the 20s, 30s and 40s, um, the golden age of Hollywood, uh, almost every single creative genius who worked there was an alcoholic. And um, if you look at the great period of the 70s, when those magnificent films were made for everything, The Godfathers, obviously, The Easy Many Riders... Many would say the, the, the greatest period was, of American cinema, yeah, yeah. And everyone there was an addict or a, 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 or a drunk. Even and people, now yeah. nobody is, and basically Hollywood turns out shit. Even. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> I'm sure we could find uh, one or two. Of them <laughs> still, yeah, of course I exaggerate. <laughs> but it is an odd thing that, that certainly, I'm happy to say, of course, after the BAFTAs, all the parties are pretty sober and people behave. Nobody... People have one little drink and that's about it, really. Yeah. But if you went back 20 years ago, 25 years ago, it was a very different story. And I don't know why that is. I think the answer is phones have cameras on them now. <laughs> that's a very good point. That is a lot to do with it, isn't it's it? It's much easier to get caught out. Now, let me ask you about, if I can, a little about uh, home life, because it was just a, a year ago, just over a year ago, you were married. We That's were correct. On the Absolutely. Show. So and just I still am. I think so, I may be a record in yeah. show business. <laughs> you celebrated your first anniversary. Oh, there he is. How are you enjoying married life? How I'm is actually it? older than him. He probably can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's fabulous. There's the. That's my ring. Oh, wow. Um, it's terrific. It gets better every day. I, I'll sound really childish if I keep doing this, but it is. It's like a, it's like a miracle, really. It's just such a wonderful thing. Let me ask you a little bit about your social networking life, because you were the first person I knew who was on Twitter, and yes. you now have an absurd amount of followers. You're, you're almost as big as uh, Kim Kardashian, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> you got like buttocks, 12, yeah. 12, <laughs> 12 or 13 million, I think, yes. OK, and I... do you still enjoy Twitter, yeah. or do you, has it changed? Has it changed on you? It has changed. I, um, it was with you that, um, actually, Twitter in Britain sort of slightly expanded after you and I did, a, did a sh one of your shows in which you asked me, what is this Twitter, then? And I... <laughs> that's Dorothy, by the way. Um, and... <laughs> the pain goes on. I wouldn't... <laughs> I'm sorry. And so, uh, yeah, we, we chatted about it, and, and it just went woof in, in, in Britain. But it's... Uh, it, there's no way of saying this without sounding a bit um, mean-spirited, and I don't mean to, but I sometimes wonder when I look at my inbox uh, of, a, of a morning of emails, how many will be from people who actually want to say something to me or who want to suggest a dinner or just something friendly? Interact. Because 95% of them are people asking me to tweet something for mm. them. Yeah. And the only time anybody gets in touch with me now is to ask me to tweet. And, of course, very often it's an extremely worthy thing. I, I have to say, I, I can't tweet for their 
comedy channel on YouTube or for their, um, you know, a film that they're wanting to fund. Or... What about a film that's coming out in a couple of weeks? A film, really? <laughs> <laughs> a Grimsby. I had one of those very camp dresses, you know, that you have. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was he had a very odd dresser uh, in the theatre. They're the people who dress you, literally dress you. And, and, uh, and he, ha he was one of those people who would swear in the oddest ways. I remember someone said something he didn't like and he looked after them and went, May the bird of paradise fly up her shitter. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what that meant. <laughs> but anyway, uh, anyway, I remember I was, we went to, to, a, to the theatre bar after a performance and he was there. So I asked him if he'd like a drink. He said, I have a Grimsby. I said, yeah, Gr Grimsby, does the barman know that? He said, try it. I said, uh, and the Grimsby, please. The barman said, you what? I said, he doesn't know. Said, it's a small port, you daft... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the language. It's very good. It's very good. Well, yeah, I think that's the acceptable place for you. Uh, Stephen, you won't need it from me or from anyone here, but good luck with the BAFTAs. Uh, it's yeah, in nice. the safest of possible hands. It'll be a fun, it'll be a great show, and an exciting evening. Uh, how lovely to have you back on the show, Mr. Stephen Fry, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Believe it or not, we have more still to come. We'll be joined by Ronnie Brandon Nathan. See you after the break. I'm still here with Sasha, with Amy, with Stephen. Let's do my final guest out. He's one of the country's top stand-up comedians, the very, very funny Mr. Ramesh Ranganathan. <laughs> Ramesh, great to have you back on the show. I mean, this is a bit embarrassing, isn't it? Why is that? <laughs> well, because you've got these guys. I look like some prick that's won a competition. Well, <laughs> uh, but in a way, well, mate, we're all just pricks who won a competition, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> there's, uh, there's some blokes sitting at home watching this just going, oh, they've got to have one of them on every bloody show now, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you've raised the issue of diversity there, of yeah, course. Yeah. Uh, I don't have batteries, but Oscar, it's been a big story that the Oscars is essentially a very, very white situation. Well, I think it's an interesting one. You know, Will Smith, obviously, uh, there's some controversy there that he should have been nominated for an Oscar, but I don't think that's because of his race. I think it's because the Oscar panel remember Wild Wild West. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's and a... that is, you can't have a mechanical spider and then win an Oscar, mate. No, that's <laughs> a striking answer forevermore. <laughs> so you recently, since last we spoke, we were talking about uh, your family's roots in Sri Lanka. Yeah. And you returned there to, to make a show with, with your mother, I believe. Is this good? Well, my mum sort of sent me out there. My mum was sort of annoyed that I don't know anything about my heritage. So the whole idea is that I go out and to Sri Lanka and sort of get connected with my roots, you know? Because, uh, you know, I'm English and I'm proud to be English, but I've got this beautiful heritage that I didn't yeah. know anything about. About. Well, I've never been to the country, but I understand it's just one of the most beautiful places on the planet, so it must have been lovely. But did you enjoy meeting uh, relatives who perhaps you hadn't encountered before? Was that an interesting and informative experience for you? Yeah, it's good. It's difficult because I'm an Englishman in an amazing Sri Lankan disguise, right? So, so <laughs> what basically happens is... <laughs> <laughs> is that everyone expects you to be able to speak the language yeah, yeah, yeah. and be culturally sound, yeah, and yeah. I just didn't have a clue what I was doing. So <laughs> I'd just be walking around and go, and I go... <laughs> <laughs> it was difficult because, like, you know, sometimes... So a lot of my relatives have not left, you know, the, the, the villages that, um, that they're from originally and can't speak English, and so you can't connect with them as much as you'd like. And I had this one thing with... It, there's an uncle, one, one of my uncles who, in the episode that he was in, he didn't speak at all. He just sort of wiped me down for the duration <laughs> of the episode. <laughs> and uh, and w w he introduced me to his wife, and she's sort of a sl slightly portly woman, and he said, uh, Ramesh, my wife. And I went, all right, cool. And then, <laughs> and then he went, fat, no? Right? <laughs> and, then, and then I looked at her and she was going, yeah, yeah, fat, 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 fat. <laughs> Thought, like, they just don't have a hang-up about it. It's just like, yeah. matter of fact, you're fat, you're ugly, we just all get along. <laughs> you know what I mean? it's, it's kind of nice. Uh, now, you've got three boys, haven't you? Is that right? Yeah, uh, and now they're, boys, they're yeah. six, four, and one. Six, four, and one, yeah. But I've heard, when I hear you speaking in your comedy, you tend to talk about the four-year-old more than the other two. So is that a, that's a richer <laughs> source of material? Well, um, You just the, don't like the other two? What is well, it? <laughs> the, actually, the opposite is true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the the, the, the one-year-old is not contributing anything 
you know, not, not pulling his weight yet. Not, not personality-wise or anything. You sort of look at me and go, do something, you know, our ongoing futures depend on you being amusing here. He's being lazy. <laughs> lazy kid. Yeah, the eldest one is quite sweet. Just, hi, Daddy, love you, Daddy. Um, but the second one, it's not that I don't... I love him, but I don't like him. You know, that's a, <laughs> a very difficult thing. But but the, but, but the fact of the matter is, I, I like that about him. Yeah. I think he will be a great adult. It's just a nightmare right now. now. Yeah. You know, he's just he's not even got a survival instinct. You know, and <laughs> I find it frustrating. I resent sort of giving him birthday presents because I think <laughs> you've done nothing to get to this point. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but it sounds. I don't want you to think that I don't. I'm not. I don't love my kid. It's just that. He's got these personality flaws. He doesn't listen to anything I say. Uh, he doesn't have any respect. Yeah. But I sort of wish the, the, the older one had a bit of that, you know, sort of questioning. My, my oldest son is very keen. He's too keen. You know, like, he's just sort of, hey, no, you should have heard what happened at school today. You know, don't assume that I care. You know, in terms of... <laughs> Amy, are you, are you as involved in your children's lives as Ramesh is? Are you, uh, do you find them as much a source of constant oh, pleasure? I, I, it's so freeing when, when people call their own kids assholes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Um, no, I mean, my guys are five and seven, and brothers, really enmeshed brothers, very different. The older one just tortures the younger one, just with a blink of an eye can psychologically destroy him. He, he's, he's done this new thing now where... Um, my younger son will be playing with a toy, and Archie, my oldest, will come over and say, that's mine. And Ava will say, no, it's, it's mine. And he'll say, no, everything in this house is mine. <laughs> and Ava will just look at me and say, like, is that true? And just some days when you're a little tired, you just say, y yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Sasha, you got, is it two girls and a boy? Too early to say, really. I mean... <laughs> Check. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many signs either way. I mean, it's... <laughs> it's best to stay fluid. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you about this show you're doing. It's called It's Not Rocket Science. Starts Tuesday, 8 p.m. here on ITV. Tell me uh, how this works. I don't look like I'm that keen to be involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it looks like two of you have jumped on that young woman for a selfie in the street somewhere. Right? She, she doesn't know who either of you are. Basically, the show is um, the three of us. Uh, it's, it's a science show, but you don't have to have any science knowledge or an indeed interest. It's just sort of more asking questions about the world, if you like. So, um, but it's sort of everyday stuff. So, for example, one of the things I did was, uh, you know, with a, with a regular household vacuum cleaner, you can lift up a car if you've got the right size nozzle. Just a regular suck on a vacuum cleaner would lift a car? A regular vacuum cleaner would lift a car. No. No, mate, I'm serious. Right? Uh, so basically, what they, they wanted to demonstrate that. <laughs> they wanted to demonstrate that. So what they did was, is they, they suspended me using a vacuum cleaner above a tank of crocodiles. <laughs> because obviously, if you have the car and stuff, it's not, that's not glamorous. What they said is, no, Rum, it's better if you actually, like, you could die. You know, so... <laughs> but, yeah, they just, they just put me up and then just spun me over and, like, the vacuum cleaner was the only thing holding me up. Wow. Let's have a look. <laughs> Let's have a look at Romish's new show. This is It's Not Rocket Science. It starts Tuesday night on ITV. Have a look at this. What you need to gain is a bit of faith in the principle and the science here. Hopefully, a demonstration will put Romish's mind at ease. So that sounds like it should be working now. Yeah, just uh, nice and solid. All right, they're going to start spinning it round. There you go. Whoa. Ah. <laughs> That's not su supposed to happen. Either that has gone wrong or it's a joke. Either way, not funny. Well, wow, there you go. It looks like great fun. No one was killed yet during that show. No. But you were, because um, we mentioned you being a teacher, and you were a maths teacher, weren't I you? I was a maths teacher. Yeah. yeah. And did you enjoy teaching? Because I guess to see, you know, have young minds and to help shape them and push them towards a, a brighter future, that must be a lovely feeling. The truth is, I did love teaching. But the problem with teaching for me is it's all about the children, and I wanted to do something that's all about me. Yeah. And yeah. that's yeah. like, <laughs> the it, see, That was your calling, that was a vocation for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you did your share. But, Amy, your, your parents were teachers, yeah, weren't they? Yeah, both my parents were public school teachers. And they, and they had so much crazy... They had so many crazy stories. My, my dad kind of taught the bad kids. 
my mom taught the good kids. And we were, and I, I just, most of my childhood was spent up in my bedroom looking through a window at the bad kids, uh, you know, raking leaves in our lawn. Wow. It's kind of like I, I had. Well, took them yeah, home. Yeah, brought we them took home. them home. <laughs> we would, we, my parents would like, you know, uh, help, the, they'd, ha they'd, they'd help them get extra money. Cause they it, had a it, system of slavery. Yeah, right, that's right. Right. <laughs> It sounds like your parents were doing like pretty well out of these bad kids. Yeah, you have to break our leaves or you don't get an A. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, you travelled here tonight on the back of four <laughs> bad kids, I <laughs> seem to recall. <laughs> we, we, we had one kid at our school that was like really badly behaved. And uh, he was a, an Asian kid. His dad sounded like your lawyer. And he, he came into the, he came, came to have a meeting, we're having a meeting about it. And he said, uh, we're saying we don't know what to do about him. You know, it's, it's really tough. And he says, why don't you just hit him? <laughs> and I said, and I said, well, we're not allowed, we're not actually allowed to do that. And then he said, what if I gave you a letter that said you were? <laughs> It's great to have you again. So you're touring all this year. You've got 2016 yeah. pretty much fully booked. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm touring all the way through the year. I think spring's sold out, but there are still tickets for autumn. Yeah. <laughs> We've gone for venues that are way too big. So please just. <laughs> the smile you did then, which was slightly mocking, was really, really terrifying. Yeah. Ramesh <laughs> <laughs> Ranganathan, ladies and gentlemen, go see him live. If you're going to He's a phenomenal comedian. Thanks to all my guests tonight, of course, Mr. Stephen Fry, the wonderful Amy Poller, and the brilliant Sasha Baron Cohen. But here performing is UK number one, Stitches. Please go crazy for Mr. Sean Mendes. <laughs> Your words cut deeper than a knife Now I need someone to bring me back to life Got a feeling that I'm going under But I know that I'll make it out of love If I quit calling you my lover Move on You watch me bleeding till I can't breathe I'm shaking, falling onto my knees you know that I'm without your kisses I'll be needing stitches I'm tripping over myself I'm aching, begging you to come out You know that I'm without your kisses I'll be needing stitches Just like a march on to the flame Oh, you let me in I couldn't sense the pain your bitter heart go to the touch Now I'm gonna reap what I saw I'm not seeing red on my own I got a feeling that I'm going under But I know that I'll make it out alive If I quit calling you my lover Move on You watch me bleeding till I can't breathe I'm shaking, falling onto my knees you know that I'm without your kisses I'll be needing stitches I'm tripping over myself Aching, begging you to come out You know that I'm without your kisses I'll be needing stitches Needle and thread, gotta get you out of my head Needle and thread, gonna wind up dead Needle and thread, gotta get you out of my head Needle and thread, gonna wind up dead Needle in the thread, gotta chew out of my head Needle in the thread, gonna wind up dead Needle in the thread, gotta chew out of my head Chew out of my head You watch me beat it till I can't breathe I'm shaking, falling onto my knees you know that I'm without your kisses I'll be needing stitches I'm tripping over myself Aching, begging you to come out You know that I'm without your kisses I'll be needing stitches